happened yesterday. So now we will start from verse 30. We are doing chapter 3, Bhagavad Gita, verse 30. Therefore, dedicating all actions to me with your mind fixed on me, the self of all, freed from desire and the feeling of mium and cured of mental agitation fight. So, Sri Krishna is explaining to Arjuna. He is telling him that first and foremost, don't think that you are doing it for yourself. You are just a tool. You are just an artificial intelligence. If you remember my words from the previous satsangs. You are just a tool of mine. Behave like a tool. Do not come with your own ego and your mind in front of me. I am going to put you over there. I am the one who has kept you in that place. I am the one who has given you this family, this body, this world. The caste, the creed, the religion, everything I have given. Now since I have made you for a certain purpose, your job is to dedicate your tasks to me. Correct? So if there is a machine, that machine belongs to that person. So if I have a phone and the phone belongs to me, so the phone is supposed to act according to my wishes. The phone cannot say I am going to do what I feel like. No. The phone has specific jobs pertaining to what I desire to do with him. So here Sri Krishna is saying, first remove this from your mind that you are working on your own. You have to dedicate all your actions to me. You are my faithful servant. You are my faithful artificial intelligence. You are the one who is a machine which I am operating. So do this work only for me. Fix your mind on to me. That means do not do anything for somebody else. Got it? So let us say if there is a husband and a wife. The husband should not say these words that I am doing it for my wife and I am doing it for my children. The wife should not say that I am doing it for my husband or I am doing it for my children, I am doing it for my in-laws. Nothing like that. You are doing everything for Krishna. Reason is very simple. That whether it is a husband, wife, children, parents, grandparents, uh, in-laws, outlaws, whatever it might be, they are all... Krishna's children. Got it? Everybody belongs to Sri Krishna. The divine entity. So whatever action that you do, you are actually doing it for Krishna. You are not doing it for some petty human being. First thing you need to understand this. So stop thinking that I am doing this for my wife. I am doing this for my children. I am doing this for my in-laws. I am doing this for my world, my country. Nobody does anything for anybody. They all do it for Sri Krishna. So dedicating this action to me and fixing your mind on me. The self of all. I am the self of everybody. This is what I said. Krishna is in everybody. Freed from desire and the feeling of mium. And cured of mental agitation fight. First you have to remove this I, me, myself. I am doing it. I am doing it. I am. That you are not some great sheikh in this world. You are some ordinary mortal. You are just some machine. You first remove that ego from your mind that I am somebody great. You are nobody in this world. You are just doing a job because I have commanded you to do. Do you get it? Sri Krishna has put this person in the world so that the person can do the job which he is supposed to do. He means she also. Okay. And should not have a personal desire in it. Because if the machine thinks, Oh, I don't want, I don't want to do this, you know. I want to do something else. That is the personal desire. You can't have that. Now I have lights in front of me. Okay, if I look up, can you see the light reflecting in my eye, in my glasses? Right? So this is a white light. This is a machine. It's an object. 
Now if I look like this and the, the light says to me, I mean it's saying to itself, what does this idiot think of me? I am going to make myself red in color or I am going to make myself yellow in color. Is it following my dictates? No. I need white light. White light should be there. So if there is a desire of the machine to work on its own, then what is the use of me owning that machine? So please understand, if you are not performing the task for Krishna, you are not under his ownership then. You think of yourself as some independent person. So Sri Krishna is very clearly saying, now this is for those who understand spirituality. Now since you all are sitting for this satsang, please understand this. This is, you are working for Krishna, you are not working for some ordinary person in your life. I cook for my husband. Sorry, you are not cooking for husband. You are cooking because Krishna has told you to cook. This is misunderstood by Indians. Indians think that their pati is Parmeshwar. A pati is a big idiot. He keeps on drinking and smoking and womanizing and all that. How can he become Parmeshwar? Parmeshwar means God. That pati is a useless bugger. That is worth not even revering. But please understand, what Sri Krishna says over here is this. You have to see God in that idiot also. Okay? Even if he is drinking, smoking, womanizing or whoever. And you have to see God even in the children. You have to see God even in your mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law, whoever it might be. And treat them like children of God. Like you are a child of God. Since you know spirituality, it is your job to treat everybody in equal way. So he says... Your mind is to fix on me who is the self of all. So the misinterpretation is I have to pray to my husband. That is wrong. Do you pray to your brother-in-law? Do you pray to the maid who comes to work? Do you get the point? My husband is there so I have to pray to him. No. No. Are you praying to your children? Are you praying to every other person, your neighbor, the dog outside? No. Otherwise tomorrow you go and with a thali and you say, you know, my dear dog, you are my husband. You can't do that, no? This is a stupid thing. So the same equal I should be there for everybody. Got the answer? So Sri Krishna's words are very, very clear. Don't confuse yourself into thinking that some Pati and Parmeshwar is together. No. Please understand the whole world is Parmeshwar. Okay. So, let us come to it. Freed from the desire. So, it is there should be no desire whatsoever. You are not doing some favor to anybody. And you are not doing favor to yourself also. So, there should be no desire of any kind. Oh, I want this. That is why I want some money from my husband because I want to go and shop today. So I will give him nice cup of tea, nice, you know, food and stuff like that. Okay, so when he is sitting over there, he will ask me, how much money do you want to spend today? No, stupid thing is that. And nowadays the husband also will sit over there and say, uh, he will tell his wife, 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 you are working, no, I want money. No, there is nothing like that. There should be no desire of any kind. Then, the feeling of me. Nobody should have this I, me, myself thing and cured of mental agitation. All the mental agitation that a person has, no? He has to throw it out of the window. Because if you are doing a job, you should be focused in doing your job. You remember you are a machine. If the machine suddenly starts thinking about something, like the light which I showed you, it starts dreaming of some beautiful other light. And it turns pink. Huh? You, you think you will like that? No, I want white light just now and it is turning pink. How is that? It's in a dream world. <laughs> so, this kind of thing should not be there. So, always use the knowledge for understanding and doing work for Krishna. Hmm? So, we move to the next one. And the last word is fight. You know what fight means? 
He's telling Arjuna, he's saying, you please leave all your nonsense outside this battlefield. What is this you are saying? Oh, he's my brother. I can't fight my brother. He's my grandsire. He's my Gurudev. I can't fight my Gurudev. What's going to happen to their children? What's going to happen to their wives? Their wives will become, you know, uh, widows and whatever. I don't think like that kind of thing. What kind of stupidity is there? Oh, I was thinking today I will take a cruise on the uh, Mediterranean. What? Focus on the fight, man, stupid. So, <laughs> Sri Krishna is openly telling Arjuna, don't throw your mind off the track. You are sitting here to fight. You are, you are doing this for fighting. Fight. So, whatever job that is given to you, you are supposed to do that job. So, we do the next verse now. We are doing uh, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 3, verse 31. Even those men who with an uncavilling and a devout mind always follow this teaching of mind are released from the bondage of all actions. Yes. A mind which doesn't cling on to something else. A mind which is focused in one direction. In one direction only. If you are doing one job, do that one job. Don't think of hundred other things simultaneously. You see, human beings have this tendency. When you tell them, you know, pay attention. I was cooking in the kitchen. What do you mean by I was cooking in the kitchen? You are supposed to be there. Do this satsang. You know, in, in my past satsangs, I had told people, keep your windows open. Your camera open. You know, most of the time you are falling asleep. And most of the time you are not even paying attention to a single word that you are listening to. You are just paying, you are just showing that you are existing over here. You know, this is what people did during the pandemic, isn't it? They were faking it. They will just put on the, uh, on the uh, computer and they will be doing whatever they felt like. They will be scrolling through their phones. They are not paying one bit attention to what is being done. So where is this mind of yours? Your mind is lost in something else. You are not dedicated and devoted to me. Got the answer? I have not found many people in this world who have single pointed devo devotion even to the satsang that is going on. They are doing some other activity. First and foremost, they will not keep their uh, you know windows open, which means basically the camera open. Secondly, because they will think, you know, I am not dressed for it. What do you mean by you are not dressed for it? Are you not supposed to be ready and sitting over here? See? So they are doing it just for the heck of it. First, you need to have dedication and devotion to the job that you are doing. This is called single pointed devotion. This is where people have to be with the Guru for this purpose. The Guru will not, you see, the, when, the, when they are talking to the Guru, if you have a shifty eyes in the here, looking here, there, 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 there. Anybody who is sitting in front of me, I tell them, you know, look at me. Then I know what is going on in their mind. Because they are lost in some world of theirs. They will never have the straight eye, you know, like they will not keep on looking like this at, at me. Why? Too many things are going on in their mind. So here he says, uncavilling and devout mind, dedicated to that one thing only. So if you are sitting for the satsang, are you 100% here? So Sri Krishna's words are very clear. He says, you cannot have a mind which is roaming all over the world. You got to have a dedicated and a devoted mind to this. Always follow the teachings of mind. If I have told you that you have to do this, please don't doubt that sentence. If I say, write this letter just now, You think I am some ordinary person that you are, I am just requesting you please, 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 please. You know all the, all the local people that you meet or your own bosses. Your boss says, you know, oh, you have to do this. And you are thinking, why the hell should I do this? The boss is my, is a big idiot. I don't want to do. So they are not devoted and dedicated to the action that they do. If you want to be in spiritual, 
You see, the only reason why I can have one, two or three or four disciples is for this reason. Nobody is dedicated or devoted to the cause. So here he is saying, you should follow the teachings. Follow the teachings means there is a specific methodology for getting to be the number one in this world, for becoming enlightened, for going towards Krishna's devotion. You cannot have hundred things going on in your, in your world, including your mind. You have to be single-pointedly devoted to this. Hmm? And this is what he says, follow the teachings as mind. Then are released from the bondage of all actions. Then only, then only no karma will accrue to you. Okay? I will give you one example. Many a times, as a guru, my job is to advise people. I just tell them and I tell very casually some things. You have to listen to the words very carefully. These words are very dicey. Nobody understands the words that well. So, I will say, Oh, you are coming from somewhere. Okay, uh, come at 8 o'clock. So what the person thinks? Oh, Guruji has just called me for talking to me about something. So I will first do my this work and then that work and then that work and then I will reach safely at 8 o'clock. And the person lands over here at 9 o'clock. Have you listened to me dedicatedly, devotedly? No. Here he says, always follow the teachings of mine. So if Krishna says, do this, don't use your mind in it. Just do that thing. I have many people who are very sick. Sometimes they come to visit me. So when they come to visit me, I will give them some food to eat. This food is actually detrimental to the disease that they have. In the normal life. And I deliberately put it in front of them, telling them, eat this. No, I can't eat this. Their mind is talking. I am having this problem. I can't eat this ice cream, but I am suffering from cold. If you do this, then your cold is going to increase. It's not magic. It's not magic at all. It is what is called single-pointed devotion. So the person eats that ice cream. And in a day or two, the cold vanishes. At that time you really wonder, with the ice cream the cold is supposed to increase and become into a completely choked nose and throat and everything. And yet, this disease vanished. What actually happened? There is a very funny incident where <laughs> Sai Baba does this, deliberately he will do. This person has loose motions. Okay? And somebody is having uh, groundnuts with him. You know groundnuts. So, <laughs> so Sai Baba deliberately takes some groundnuts and gives him. This person is thinking, I have got loose motions, how can I eat this? Well, you have to eat it with faith. Now, faith is some word which nobody can understand. You know, <laughs> faith means you have to have full belief in what is being done over there. The whole point of this is, Sri Krishna is saying to this person, Arjuna, Arjuna, your job is to fight. Don't keep on questioning my integrity. I am the lord of this world. What, what I am saying? I am the, the one who has created you. I am the one who knows the future. I am the one who has complete understanding of this subject. So what makes you think that you, you are doing something which is, you know, not supportive of this? Don't use your mind in this. Just pick up your sword, pick up your bow and arrow and fight. So even those men with an uncavilling and a devout mind always follow the teachings of mind are released from the bondage 
of all actions. So if you do those actions, you are going to be released from it. That means all that is associated with that, whatever that problem is, will be removed in your life. This is the ultimate thing. Alright? So I hope you all understood this.